Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. Thanks for joining us for this episode of In Depth. Although we might be out of our depth. We're not out of our depth. All right, so we've gotten so many comments this past week about this episode of Fully Charged Mm -hmm. um, from Robert Llewellyn, who did an episode on the Nissan Autonomous Leaf. Yes. You should go watch it. It's a really cool episode. We love Robert Llewellyn. So go check it out right here. This is where you can click it. Just go watch it, come right back, and we'll talk about it. Yeah. As you just saw, the uh, Nissan Leaf, they showed off it being autonomous this week. Mm -hmm. I was blown away. Um, Then I was watching it with Jesse, and Jesse was like, well, not so blown away. I was a little, I mean, I'm very impressed that they're able to do this. I think that that's a a huge step forward. Um, But I've seen it before. I've seen Tesla do it. I've seen the the Chevy Cruze uh, automated system do it. I think and, and this is this is this is my thought here. You can have a prototype of just about anything, mm-hmm. okay? And you can pour a ton of money. Like I'm sure that leaf cost well over a million dollars to produce to, to really? put in. I mean, obviously a lot of that is, is um, you know design costs and stuff like that. But they I think d- they did say that each sensor has its own computer. Each sensor and has its own computer. It's, using... it's all they're all sitting in the back. So I'm assuming the whole back of the car, if you looked back, there would just be a mess of computers. And it's using 1.5 kilowatts of energy of for energy computers. just for the computers. computers. So I mean, this is four lidars. Right. This is not a viable car. You're never going to. I mean. But they didn't say it's for this year. They said they want it for 2020. For 2020. I, I agree. But the thing is, I'm not impressed because Tesla is, is going to do it before them. I agree. I mean, I think the smart part of what Tesla is doing is they're saying, we can't afford to put LiDAR on our cars right now because the price of LiDAR is about, what, $10,000 a puck. Right. Um, and so they're like, we're going to do it with what, what can we can afford, which is some cameras and so forth. Right. And so I agree. In three years, they will have so much more data, so much more software and so so forth that Mm -hmm. they will be far ahead of where Nissan is. But I do like that Nissan is saying we're going to be part of this game. I do like that, too. I'm just I think that the the thing that I'm coming away with is they're not making a realistic car to show us. They're making a car which just the LiDAR alone costs more than the Model 3. But I do want to point out this interesting thing that we learned recently watching Tony Sebo, which is that the price of LiDAR, just like almost any computer-related thing, is coming down, and it's coming down fast. The thought is, if we look at the curve of the price of LiDAR, that it could come down to wicked cheap. We're talking, you know, just little sensors that cost a buck that you can throw on that are the size of a postage stamp. And I know that seems inconceivable right now when they're costing $10,000 or mm-hmm. something. But when they get into mass production and LiDAR becomes something that is just mass produced, it's conceivable to me that it could get down to really cheap, which means you could just cover everything with LiDAR. And I think LiDAR is a superior technology to just cameras alone because it can make this 3D model of what's around your car. And that's something that cameras can't do at the moment. True. I, I mean, I think that there is a huge advantage to using LiDAR, but we aren't at that point yet. I, I'm just saying that maybe Nissan is smart to think, okay, we know the price of LiDAR will be cheap enough to put it on our cars in 2020, so we're going to start developing all the software, get our engineer teams and so forth ready, so that in 2020 we will be ready. As opposed to the Tesla model, which is we're not even going to talk about LiDAR right now since we can't afford it, and we're just going to focus on what we have, which means in 2020... I don't know, will they be as advanced on LiDAR as Nissan? I mean, but advanced on LiDAR, I think that they're going to have, they're going to be working out different scenarios of, of, of things to, that you're going to need to, to worry about when you're talking about a point-to-point fully autonomous car. Now, what's point-to-point mean? So point-to-point means that you can just sort of get in the car and say, you know, go to work and it will just, it just t- takes you there. Oh, okay. So that's that's what point to point means. It means it'll take you from one point to the other. It doesn't like so right now with autopilot, um, like autopilot one or autopilot two. It's you, not point. You to get point. on the highway and then you put it into autopilot, most likely. And it doesn't drive you any place in particular. You you are still in charge of figuring out right. where to go. You're in charge of red lights. You're in charge of different on ramps, on off ramps. Right. Like it will try not to smash into anything. But, like, it won't follow any of the traffic laws or anything like that. I was just so impressed by the fully charged episode showing this Nissan Leaf driving in normal, you know, low-speed traffic, driving on the highway. It handled every situation except for one, which was there was a parked bus or something, and the driver had to manually take over. 
and basically you just take over the steering wheel and then when you're ready to let it take back over you let go of the steering you just wheel. let go of the steering wheel that was really cool i liked how it was in standby like he and and the guy acknowledged that it couldn't handle the situation that he was going to take over and i think that that's fair and, and that's interesting to me what do we as humans think when we get behind a car that is stopped i mean because if a car is stopped just because it's waiting for a red light you don't drive around it but when a car is stopped because they're doing something unusual like um moving you know and they're not going to you know, they're moving furniture or something and they're going to be there for 20 minutes. Then, you know, oh, I got to go around it. We must use visual cues like, oh, there's a guy, you know, there's no driver in that car. So he obviously this car is not going to be moving anytime soon. Right. And, or the, the lights are flashing, hopefully right. sometimes. Um, and in this situation, it was a bus that he had to pull around. And I think that's interesting because, uh, you know, when how do you know how when, do you know if the bus is about to pull out or not? I mean, usually they put on a blinker and usually you can hear it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that that's in, in the future, would the would the bus send out a signal like I'm going to be here for 20 minutes so that cars around it could know more information than a driver could? I don't know if it would say something like that, but I mean, it, it would definitely say like I am stopped. You can go around me, and that's sort of um, we've talked about before the the vehicle to vehicle communication. I think that that's something that could get implemented into that. It, it totally depends. I'm not an expert on it for sure, but you know, if you have thoughts, definitely leave them in the comments about that. That'd be interesting. I just want to point out that there's so many reasons why we need autonomous cars. I mean, the the deaths on U.S. roads has gone up. In 2016, 40,200 people were killed in vehicle motor vehicle accidents. That is up 6% from the year before. And the year before that, 2015, vehicle deaths were up 7%. This is has not happened since 2007. The numbers had been dropping for a decade, and then all of a sudden, they're going back up again over right. the 40,000 mark. And this mark. is not just because there's more people on the roads. Right. This is per miles driven. Right. So, that's, so why is that happening? I think it has a lot to do with right. distracted just, drivers. Right. Yeah, let me just... Uh... See? And this is it right here. Um, distracted drivers, we've all seen it, right? right. We've, we've seen people who drive along with a, with a phone right there on the steering wheel, and they're glancing at that, glancing at the road, glancing at that, glancing at the road. And there's just no way that you can be a good driver when you're doing that. But so many people now think, I'm pretty good at it. Right. I haven't gotten into an accident yet. I've been doing it for about a year. Oh, I think I, you know, yeah, sure, I'm, I'll just... I'm better than anyone else at this. Yeah, I'm just going to check my email real quick. Yeah. It's super dangerous. And so, I mean, I think... And it's not going away. I mean, right. we're not going to give up our cell phones. We're not going to shut them off. I mean, I, unless you pass some laws or make some things where they don't work in the car or something, people are just going to keep sneaking peeks. And as long as they do that, I mean, I want to also point out pedestrian deaths are up to over almost 6,000 last year. Right. That's, I think, 11% increase. Or was it 14% increase over the year before? That's because pedestrians are also not paying attention and drivers aren't paying attention. Right. Put that so, two together, you get a horrible mix. Right. So, I mean, yeah, I think that that's one of the reasons why autonomous driving is going to be important. I mean, yes, just bringing down the number of automobile accidents and deaths is huge. I mean, the the cost is immeasurable because we're talking about lives. Yeah. I mean, it's not just the damage to vehicles that could be avoided and the damage to property and the it, but it's the damage to lives and I mean you just can't put a price on that. Another thing I just want to mention about this video is I feel like older people I'm getting to be in that age group myself and as we get older driving becomes a scarier proposition. Our eyes aren't as good as they once were. Our reflexes aren't as good as a, a young person's mm -hmm. are. So we know that about ourselves and so it, as autonomous comes online I think the older people are going to be the first ones to jump onto buying it because it may not be sexy for, you know, a 20-something to drive an autonomous car. Like, hey, I can't drive the car myself. But older people, we don't really want to drive the car ourselves all the time, especially if things about us are failing. Um, we want to get to our grandkids' house safely. But honestly, even as, as a 20-something-year-old, I don't just super enjoy driving. I know that there are people who say, I enjoy driving. Um, but do you really? Because, I mean, yes, I agree that, like, when it's, you know two o'clock in the morning, there's no one on the roads and you're just going down this, vroom, vroom, vroom. that, that might be fun. But if well, you're going to work and there's just traffic and you just have to sit in traffic, I don't, it's just not fun. When we made our Florida road trip recently, and you should go watch an episode, maybe I'll put it right here. Mm -hmm. Um, 
it was a lot of fun when we got to certain states because certain states, you don't have the traffic we have, or at least not what we experienced on our trip. Right. Your traffic is much lighter. Your roads are much nicer. Mm -hmm. Your weather is much better. So maybe I can see how if you're in states like South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, um, maybe you enjoy driving a whole lot more because you don't have to deal with what we have to deal with here in the Northeast. We have massive traffic. We have horrible roads. We have horrible weather. And drivers. And horrible drivers. So um, driving around here maybe just naturally isn't as fun as it is for you guys. It's true. But anyway, I think that just the safety factors alone uh, make it worth it. If, yeah. if you have a family, if you have people that you care about mm -hmm. um, that get into your car, I want an autonomous car because I want to protect those people. I, I want there to be not just me driving mm -hmm. in the beginning, at least. I want there to be someone else looking out for me that has tons of cameras and tons mm -hmm. of LIDAR, every, anything, anything I, to, to save my life. I want to enjoy the ride more. When you don't have to be the driver, you can look around and enjoy your surroundings and learn what's going on around you. Um, it's so true. When you when you aren't driving yourself to work, sometimes you'll just be like, wow, that's a beautiful building that I drive past every single day. I've never seen that building before. Yep. Like, wow, that's, a, or, oh, what a cool right, Because the most you can look at that building is that. Right. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Really cool episode of Fully Charged. We love those guys, all they do. Um, so go watch that and uh, comment below on your thoughts about autonomous driving. Would you allow yourself to be driven by an autonomous car or are you one of those people that say never? And then if you would, when? Yeah. Would it be today? Would it be, you know, when they fully worked out some of the technology and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. When would it be? Um, and also, please like this video. Um, liking videos lets other people see it because we want to grow this community I that we have. I don't understand, though, the liking thing. Isn't that just tell us that you like it? It doesn't. It's not for us, really. I mean, I enjoy seeing our likes go up and up. But the thing that it really does is it tells YouTube this video was enjoyed by somebody. Okay. We should share it with other people because they are going to enjoy it. So in their algorithm or something? In, in some sort of algorithm, it's going to put... Um, this video, if it gets a lot of likes, get put on someone else's suggested videos to watch. Oh, okay. It, depending on what they're interested in. So hopefully it's someone who's interested in Tesla or, or sustainability or autonomous driving. See, I mean, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make the world a better place. I mean, end of the day, when we think of videos and stuff, we want to tell you news about things that are happening that's making the world more sustainable, safer, electricity, you name it. Yep. And by hitting that like, it sounds like you can grow this community so that more people will find out about us and the message we're trying to send and also uh, channels like Fully Charged, which right. are doing a similar thing. Right, because it's totally not just about us. It's about this community that we're building. Um, we wouldn't have thought about doing this video if we hadn't gotten so many That's comments good, about it. That's a good point. Um, so it's really important that you like this video, that you um, stay involved. Yeah, comment, tell us things that you want us to, to cover. Right. Tell us new news that you find out. Absolutely. We've got, we get so many great news stories that sometimes, frankly, don't make it to the news because uh, there's so many amazing stories that, you know, Elon Musk is just... Yeah, I know. It's hard to keep up with the guy. All sorts of great things that happen in, in all sorts of different countries um, where people are... are Making a difference. Making a difference and changing the, the future. Yeah. Thank you for being a part of this. We really appreciate you watching. Thank you for subscribing. Now, now you, you know. know.